Well, here's the moment of truth. Turn it over a little bit. Yeah, let's lock the parking brake first. Oh, yeah. All right. Battery's dead. You can do anything about the hood? Or just, no, just slap it on there. There is anything it can do with that. Still one thing. Yeah. So we had the cylinders honed, new rings put in, valve guides, and cleaned it all up. And give it a little juice and we'll see what happens. Give it a try. Give it a little bit of the idle. Throttle on idle. There we go. Hmm. hmm. I wonder. Right. Just a battery. That's battery light. There's yeah. no oil pressure gauge or oil light. There's an oil light, but it's it's not light enough, so I think we're all right. So we got pressure already. Six hundred fourteen point nine hours. We'll have to keep that in mind. Is it choked? Go ahead. Gotta get fuel up to it. Yeah. Yep. Single digits today. <laughs> Close to it. Shift coupler hasn't fallen apart yet, so I guess that's a good sign. Drive shaft coupler hasn't shattered to pieces, so I guess that's a good sign. Not live on either. Yeah. So I think we got it right. Only time will tell. <laughs> and also had a broken choke cable, so that was, uh, didn't want to have to find that out, but let me just replace it.
Okay, here's the final look at the Cub now that uh, the winter rebuild project is complete and it's all back together. Um, it took us about three and a half weeks to get it all done. Uh, and I wasn't there for the entire uh, rebuild um, between school and everything. It was just hard for me to find time to come up to the shop and help them out a couple days. Uh, but about three weeks ago, uh, I made that video of me driving it up there to the shop. And then uh, the next day we tore it all apart and um, cleaned everything up, steam cleaned it, pulled the motor out. And then we started tearing it apart. And uh, there were lots of shrouds and tins and things like that. Um, that we were surprised to find. Just a lot of little outside stuff that really, um, it made a mess when we took it all apart. Um, here's here's a look at the motor. Um, we cleaned everything up real good and got rid of lots and lots of grease and dirt and stuff that we should have probably taken care of a lot earlier, but we didn't. Um, but anyway, yeah, we pulled the motor out and got all the, sh the shrouds and stuff off. And then we started tearing into the heads and we, we tore the, uh, we pulled the, the timing cover off which is on that side there um, you can't really see it but there's a that whole entire piece of the block comes off and then you have the oil pump and all that you know all that good stuff and uh, this motor was basically what this motor was doing was it was uh, burning oil and smoking blue real heavy smoke and uh, after about an hour or half hour of runtime uh, it would foul the right side plug and we'd have to clean it off and put a new one in um, and we were running Mobile One oil in this. I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head what grade oil, but uh, we found out after talking to a few people that Mobile One's no good for these small engines. So uh, we switched over to Penn's oil, which is what I run in my John Deere's. And uh, we're just going to run Penn's oil 10W30 in it now, from now on. Um, and keep in mind, this motor only has, it only had, it's not showing it now, 615 hours. You can see it had just under 615 when we first started it today. Um, so yeah, it only went 615 hours before needing a rebuild, which was kind of disappointing, but it just goes to show you they don't make them like they used to. Um, so we figured we would find like a broken ring or something major like that. We tore it all apart and we found out that there were no broken rings, no worn rings. The pistons looked good. There was not a whole lot of carbon buildup, so there wasn't... Uh, there wasn't, you know, oil or any of that, like, all over it. It hadn't made too big of a mess, so we were kind of puzzled. And then we found out that the uh, valve seals or valve guides or whatever you call them uh, had gone bad. Um, so we pulled them out, and we ordered new ones. We ordered uh, a new uh, engine or a cylinder head kit, and apparently this motor requires two of them, you know, one for each cylinder. You couldn't buy the whole thing as a kit, so we bought two uh, cylinder head kits, which had rings and and valve guides and all that stuff uh, and we took the motor up to a guy that my uncle knows who actually he had a, he had this guy do some work for him on his Wisconsin engines a couple years back um, we took him to this guy's machine shop he actually does the machine work for our local New Holland dealer which is where this tractor came from and uh, whenever they need an engine board out or machine or something like that they take it to him so we took it to this guy's little backyard shop and we had him hone the cylinders out uh, put new rings in the pistons, the, the proper rings, um, and check the torque on everything, put the the uh, pistons, rings, rods, all that stuff back in there, and uh, basically had the internals together and ready for us. Um, and then we got it back and uh, spent the last couple of days putting all the shrouds and covers and stuff like that on it, which wasn't too bad without uh, parts diagrams. We had to use parts diagrams to figure out all the the carb linkage, throttle linkage, all that stuff, which was kind of interesting. But luckily, we got it all back together. Um, and then you guys got you guys got to see that time lapse, and uh, you get to see it start it. And uh, it seems to run pretty good. The real test will be when mowing season comes around, and this thing has to work, you know, work running this 50-inch mower deck. Um, so that'll be the real test. But uh, every couple days, we'll just start this thing and let it run and let it break in a little bit. Um, we put new spark plugs in it and everything like we were supposed to do. Uh, we have to, still have to get a new air filter. We just for our uh, dealer was closed today, and um, our local Napa doesn't have that filter. They had to order it, so we don't have the right filter for it yet, the right air filter. But that's apparently with these Kohler Command engines, uh, the keeping the air filter clean is like super super important. Which I mean, the same goes for any air cooled engine, but these in particular are known to have problems when you don't keep the air filter clean. 
you know, constantly, which this, this machine does a lot of heavy mowing and dirt work or in dry and overgrown areas. So, uh, so we have to stay on top of that. We also got a new air, uh, oil filter, obviously. Put two quarts of Penn's oil 10W30 in it, like I said, and that's just what we're going to run in it from now on. Um, and it seems to run all right. Um, this is not one of the better engineered machines I've had to work with. I mean, it uses this tiny little cradle, and uh, there's an oil drain on each side, but there's no tube or anything coming out the side that makes it easy to get the plug out, so it's it's very tight. We weren't very happy about that, but um, had to lift the motor out with a chain hoist to get the bolts in from underneath because you can't put the bolts in from the top. Uh, we had to do that on both sides, so that was kind of troublesome. And uh, the uh, the drive shaft coupler was also really interesting because it uses two um, adapter, like circular adapter plates, and not it doesn't even use U joints like a heavy duty drive shaft on the older style garden tractors. So it just uses that flimsy little aluminum setup there. It's basically two couplers, two circular couplers with a set of rubber bushings in, in them. And uh, the rubber bushings fell down inside the bottom of the shroud. So we actually had to lift the motor out and uh, pull the shroud off and get the bushings out of it. But that was quite eventful. But at, you know, once we got that out of the way and we got we were able to get the dry shaft hooked up tight and torqued and uh, we hooked the motor up to the chain hoist and we were able to get up under it and stick the bolts in there and get the nuts down in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's it's very tight, very limited space. You think they'd maybe like cut a groove out of this frame or something like that, but they didn't, of course. One of several questionable things that the MTD engineers designed. Sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, long story short, the plastic studs that go inside the hood where the hinge mounts, it's supposed to be like an automotive type hood where it opens from the front. Um, yeah, those, those studs broke on the inside, those mounts. So this hinge is pretty much useless. We were going to try and fix that, but that didn't happen. There's lots of questionable design flaws on these MTD machines. Uh, I know all you MTD Cup Cadet haters are going to come on and start flaming the video, but... Hey, it wasn't my choice. My grandfather wanted something new. He wanted something with a shaft drive and with a Kohler engine. And in 2008, this was, you know, a good machine for the money. But, you know, like most pieces of equipment these days, they're just not built to last. They're not the same quality as they used to be. Um, but, oh well. If this was my machine, I would have sold it and bought a John Deere a long time ago. Or something like it. Or even an old copy that. I'm open to anything old. Um, but I definitely wouldn't buy one of these I can tell you that too much trouble more trouble than they're worth and an engine shouldn't have to be rebuilt after only 600 hours you see I have my little label down there it has the hours on it so we can continue to keep track but like I said we'll have to wait and see what happens come mowing season see how this thing does see if it has any more power see if it does any better than before um, aside from a it, everything's back together except for the choke cable. We found out that the choke cable actually snapped in two different places, so we just have to replace that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, she's good to go. And besides usual maintenance, I am never touching this machine again. <laughs> yeah, that's they purposely designed these things so you know you don't have to. You know, if something goes bad, like the, you blow the motor or something, just get rid of it. It's not worth the trouble pulling the motor out and everything. Learn from someone like me who has the first-hand experience. Don't have, don't go through that like I did. <laughs> um, that's enough ranting. Um, but, yeah, we'll just have to see how this thing does come mowing season. So hopefully this thing's good for many more years. I guess we'll find out.